Okay, uh, get a feel for how many of you are new to Drupal. Raise your hands if you're new. All right, most of you. And how many would consider yourself intermediate or, or maybe advanced? Okay, the guys that had your hands up before, see the guys that <laughs> had their hands up now. Um, the last one, if you came from uh, or stayed here from the previous lecture, which was fields and views, was an excellent lead-in to uh, what I want to show you. Uh, my name is Jim Sinkowitz, and I would have held my hand up first. I'm one of the new guys. You say, well, why am I up here? Um, because uh, I don't know if you know somebody named Drupal Chicks, uh, Angela Byron. Uh, I watched a screencast where she said that you, know, you need to get back to the community. There's like hundreds of thousands of people registered at Drupal.org, and 0.05% of those people actually respond to requests, write code, that kind of stuff. And uh, she had a whole long list of things people could do to become one of those 0.05 percenters, and one of them was answer some you know, some uh, issue requests on Drupal.org and give lectures. And I struggled with something. I wrote it down, and I'm just going to pass it on to you guys so that I can be one of those 0.05 percenters. I have a friend of mine who asked me to build a website for him, and uh, I said, well, you know, I can, I can use Drupal and build a website for you. It's really not that hard. Drupal's easy to do, and it, Drupal can do anything. I said, just go around the web and find things that you like, and then come back to me, and we'll make it work. So he came back and says, well, I went to, uh, I went to whitehouse.gov, <laughs> and I want you to make my website do that. Uh, I said, well problem, I'll just get on the internet and Google it and find out how it was done. And that's when I found out there was a thousand people trying to find out how that was done. And none of, that, none of them were answered. And I didn't want to do it exactly like that. He, he was a contractor and he just wanted to show pictures of, of his work. And uh, if you were here for the last lecture, everything that is done on this website was done with fields and views, basically. Instead of just showing events, uh, entering event data, and then showing event data, you're entering pictures and then displaying pictures. Uh, so let's get back into the demo here. This is what we're going to end up with today. This is kind of similar, reminiscent of what the White House did here on the White House website. These are pagers. If you were in the last lecture and he had pagers for the number of events, that's all these are the page numbers with a little CSS. And this right here is a tooltip. I'm not going to go into tooltip, but it's a module you can download. But this is, instead of using pager, we're using images. So when you scroll over the little white outline to make it look like a picture, and as you scroll over it, um, it changes the large image. It also changes this title. And the text, like in the, in the last lecture where you saw events, an event might have had a description. Um, the description of this image is put in a little gray box and, and put on top of the image. So this is, a, this is what I call a hover gallery. You just kind of hover over it and things change and you can watch. And this is done with two simple, event, two simple content types, like we did last lecture with events. We just created two content types. One for the title image, and one for this gallery image. Um, I need to say thanks to uh, Mustard Seed Media uh, and uh, Learn by the Drop. Uh, these, I watched a ton of videos on those two websites to learn how to do what I just what you're going to learn how to do today, and hopefully you'll you'll get some. Uh, you won't have as many pain points as I did when I, when I did it. I'm using this async thing, which I really like. This is all done in Drupal 6, but uh, it really is no different in Drupal 7. It's still you'll use some fields and views. You just might have to click in a different place on the screen in order to make it happen. But uh, I use the async theme, and these are the modules that you need to use in Drupal 6. CCK is fields in Drupal 7. It's part of core. Image field and file field are field types. Node reference URL, someone in the last class said, how do you take data from two different tables and put them together? You do that with node reference URL. It's a module that you just download from uh, the website and turn on. 
Image Cache is a module that lets you have your members upload picker, pictures or images, and you can set parameters as to how big you want them cropped or you know, uh, sized, enlarged, or reduced. And of course, you need views in the views user interface so that you can create your views. And then View Slideshow is the one that makes, makes most of the magic happen. Um, the first thing that I did is I was using um, the async theme, which is a 960 theme. Do you, people, do you know what a pixels, pixel sizes are? This theme basically defaults to 960 pixels. And it's got, you know, 10, you know, five, five pixels of margin left and right, basically. So uh, in order to fill the whole page up, I have a background image that's 950 by 400. And so on the right, the large image, that's going to be the main header image that we saw. And the left is actually another image of the titles. So think of the titles as categories. And we're going to upload images individually. And when we upload an image, we're going to select a category that it, that image fits into. So that when we display it, the category or title image will change along with whatever image it fits into. So you might have hundreds of images in five or six categories. And then the lower left-hand corner is space where I've reserved to, to make our three-by-three three matrix of, of hover targets, I call them. So image cache, I told you that that's a, that's a, that's a module that you download. And you can see here on the left that uh, you set parameters, you create a preset. In this case, I called a preset. And I, I use descriptive names so that I know later that this is actually for my header, and it's going to crop it and scale it to 520 by 345. Now, I didn't pick that arbitrarily when I created my image. Let me go back here. I decided that the large image would fit in that red square, 520 by 345. So if I was to upload an image that was a different size, image cache module would automatically make it that size. Of course, if you knew and you controlled what images were going to go up, and you only uploaded images that were 520 by 345, you wouldn't need the image cache module because there would be no need to change the size. But we want it to fit in that red square on the right. Okay, content types. Last lesson, we learned about the event. We created an event content type where we put fields in it for the, that name and the date of the event. Here we have a content type for the title images. That's the left-hand side, basically the category images. So we just create a content type, and I called it title images, and it needs a machine name. always does. Almost everything you do in Drupal asks for the name that's going to go in the table that the machine can read. And the body field, you want to remove the label. And in Drupal, by removing the label, it makes that part not show up when you're adding content. So in this case, if we take out the name body as the label, remove that, then when you go to add content type, it won't show there. We don't need descriptions for just putting category images up there. And of course, down in the workflow settings, you want to uncheck the promoted to front page because you're, you're not going to be showing this as, as a news article or information for your people. So if you click promote to front page, then as soon as you click save, it will show up on your front page. You don't, you don't want that. We're only going to display it in a view block. Now, the title image is only going to have uh, an image, basically, and, and, a, and a name for it, just for reference purposes. But it, it's absolutely required um, that <laughs> that you upload an image when you're adding this content type. So you want to make sure that that's checked. And down at the bottom of this uh, PowerPoint slide, you'll see that we gave it a name. We used a machine name, header, title, image, and that it's a type file because we're going to upload this image after we create them. And then after you've done that, you can move the fields in order by just grabbing the cross and moving them around. But the defaults are fine. Now we're going to create a content type for the main big large gallery image. Now this big gallery image not only has the image, but when we create that content, we want to say it belongs to a certain category. That's that gallery title image. We're going to use the node reference URL module to join those two tables together. 
we're going to have a description of that image. Remember, we're going to put that in a little gray overlay shadow box over the main image. And we're also, when we're uploading these images, we're not going to select that they be promoted to the front of a page like an article or a news event or anything like that. We're going to use views to display these. So we want to uncheck promote to front page. Now, this looks real busy here, but all we're doing is filling in the different fields that we need for our gallery image content type. We need the header image that we're going to upload, we need a name for it, and we need to tell Drupal that it's an image that we're going to put in that field. And the node reference is going to be a drop down to the type of categories that that image fits into. And this is uh, an important point here. Uncheck, um, you actually want to check the use the fallback behavior when editing content. What happens is, is on this particular page, let me see if I have an image of it. No. When you're creating a node reference field, one of the checkbox here is to use the fallback behavior when editing. When you're creating the node content type for the gallery image and you use the node reference field as one of the fields, this checkbox, what happens is, let's say we created uh, a gallery image and we uploaded it and we selected that it was, it was a concrete uh, category. So we selected that as the node reference and we saved it. When we go back to edit it, you won't be able to change it. Let's say, oh, that's really not concrete, that's uh, making fences. You, you won't be able to, to check and drop down the list and change it from concrete to fences, some other node category, unless this is checked. So that's what got me, took me a long time to figure that one out. So here's our header images content type. These are the fields that we added. One is just the title, can't do nothing about that. The image itself that we upload uh, and um, a node reference that links it to its title image. All right, upper left-hand corner, title image, um, 335 by 100 pixels. These can be any size you pick. You know, you're the designer. Um, I just drew it out on a piece of paper, and I tried to make it look like uh, the White House website for the purpose of this demonstration. So I have one, two, three, about eight uh, different <laughs> images, and I upload those in the content type for, for, for title images. So remember, we have one for the title images and one for the main gallery, two different content types. So we create the images and upload those uh, for the title images content type. And this is what the actual content type editing screen looks like when you're uploading them. So here we're adding these images. It's hard to see. Do you have those images in the background for the content type? Um, we're going to, I'll show you that in a minute. You'll hold that question and I'll show you how we do that. But that image right there, I know it's hard to see in this picture, but this is the upper left-hand corner of our views box that we're going to create. So we're just going to upload 10 of the header title images content types, the ones that I created. Using Photoshop, you can use whatever, whatever program that you wanted. Now when we're creating the header images, these are the large pictures. Um, this right here is the, what you see as title images. That's the node reference dropdown. And so all of the title images are associated with the title and node reference URL module gives us the ability to select from that list. If you uncheck that box default that when you go back to edit this page, that'll be grayed out and you won't be able to change it. You change your mind. So then we have the header image that we've uploaded and then the body text. This is going to show up in the little gray overlay area. So let's look at what we want to show. We want a single large gallery image. We're going to use slideshow. We want the body text that's in the header image to show up in the overlay area. And then we want a single title associated image, the upper left hand corner, and then our nine thumbnails. In this case, we're just going to load nine images. All right, so we've created two content types. And we've uploaded title images in the title content type, and we've loaded gallery images in the gallery content type. And we've associated the two with a node reference URL module by selecting, when we upload the images, what title goes to it. 
Now we're in the views module. Now the views module, we've entered the data and the views module lets us get the data out of the database and display it. So we use fields and CCK to put the data into the database and we use the views module to get the data out of the database and display it. So what do we need to do in the views module? Well, we need to create a view. And how many of you are familiar with the CSS? A little bit. Know what it does, all right? How about, uh, how many of you know how to calculate the area under a curve? <laughs> you guys? All right, but how many of you can add, all right? We can all pro probably add. Uh, Drupal's the same way. Uh, there are people that know a lot more than you, and there are people that don't, that are just starting that don't know as much as you. And this is an opportunity for you guys to uh, to try to help somebody else out, the new people that are here, if they ask you any questions that are experts, the uh, new guys. Views puts the content out of the database and displays it. So we're going to create a views block. And in CSS, when you create a block, they have a thing called the box model. And anything you put in the box, the box just keeps getting bigger. The more stuff you put into it, the bigger the box gets. If you only put something in that's this size, that's how big, how big the box stays. And if you put something in the box, and the outside, the, the, you can put other things inside that box, uh, smaller boxes inside boxes. The first outside box, if you say that that box is a certain size, then everything else you put in it has to be that size or it doesn't show up. It, you know, parts get cut off or, or whatever. So that's called the, the box model. We're going to create a views block and we're going to put that background image on there. And we're going to say that that is going to be relative to the model. So the background image we put in that box is going to cover the whole, imagine it covering the whole back of a box. It's the size of the bottom of a box that we're looking into. So once we say that's the picture that we want in the bottom of the box, and it's relative to the box, it won't change. Everything we put in there is going to fit in that box. So the first thing we want to do with views is tell it what to put in the box. So we're going to add a view. We'll call it the header slideshow. And we're going to use a node. So this is all Drupal 6. Like I said, it's a little different than Drupal 7, but it's just in a different spot on the page to select. So we're going to create a block, a, a views block. First thing you want to do is add a relationship. And this is a little bit more advanced than the most basic thing, but I had to learn it and I'm going to pass it on to you. But the title image is in one table and the gallery image is in another table. And we use the node reference URL module to link them in the database. And views has a thing called relationships. So when it goes and gets the data, if you say that there's a relationship between the stuff in these two tables, it will get all the information and put it together into one table. Yes? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I didn't find them that difficult to learn. The question was why are relationships so hard? And if you, you think about it, it's like everything else in life. Um, uh, if you break it down to its simplest level, it really isn't that difficult to understand that if, if you have a table of data here and another table of data there and they share one thing in common, that when you tell views, go get stuff from these two tables and associate them based on that one common thing that they have, just like many other relationships, it might be based on only one common thing, then it will go and get all that information and put it in its own table and, and it knows that those two things go together. So that's what relationships do. Yes, ma'am? So, so why do that way? Well, because when I created the content type for gallery image, and then I created a separate content type for um, the image titles, like categories. I, I, I chose to do it that way, one, to demonstrate the node reference URL, but two, it makes the database a lot smaller when I only have five categories and a whole bunch of images than having a whole bunch of images all with their own categories. See? So if I had 100 images, I would have 100 table rows for category where I just have a you know, just one uh, table for, for titles. Uh, 
But you'll use relationships a lot when you use views because it's easy. Once you understand that it's just doing a join, basically, between two database tables, you'll do that a lot. So we're going to add a relationship, and we're going to select the uh, content title image. If you look under there, the small print, it says node reference appears in headers images. That's that field that we that node reference field. So we're just going to check that and say the gallery header table has a relationship with the title image table. Now we're going to add some fields to our views. What do we want the view to display? Um, normally, you would just pick whatever fields that you want, and they would show up. This is the little tricky part. This is one of those views tricks. If you write this down and remember it, you're going to use this a lot. Because views, if you just pick a field and say display it, you're going to get the fields and its content. But you can do so much more with views. And you also want to be sure to uh, be mindful of the order that you put your fields. You can rearrange them. You can pick a whole bunch of them and then go and rearrange them. But there's a reason for the order that these fields are listed in. I'm going to show that to you in the middle, in a minute. The other thing, if you look up here closely, you see that we have a header, which is our image. And we have the body, which is the description of the image. And we have the title image. Remember, that's our category image in the upper left-hand corner. And then we have this thing called node teaser. Where did that come from? I didn't say anything about a teaser. Well, I just picked that field. I could have picked any field because views lets us rewrite the output of any field that we create. And we're going to just use that as a placeholder. And I put it down at the very bottom because the content at the bottom of the list gets access to the tokens of all the things above it. And so since I'm going to rewrite that and I want access to the other fields, content, tokens, it's, that's why it's listed at the very bottom. Kind of an intermediate level step for views. But you'll, you'll get it, I promise you. Now, if you look on the upper right-hand side, you'll see a checkbox next to exclude from display. The first field that we're adding is the header gallery image, main big image. We want to view this. That's what views does. It displays fields of data. Why would we want to exclude it? <laughs> and, well, if we didn't exclude it, we wouldn't be able to rewrite it later. I'm going to, and it seems like an odd concept, but if we just didn't have that check mark there, then when we did our view, it would just show up in the box. We don't want to just show it up in the box. We want to control where it shows up in the box. But we do want the field to show up. So we list that field, but we say, for, for the time being, we're saying exclude it from the display. Again, down at the very bottom, because it's an image, we can pick the format that we want views to display it on the page. Remember, we used image cache, and we created an image cache format called 520 by 340 image. Again, if you upload an image of that size, you would just select image for the format. You wouldn't select an image cache format. The next field is the body. This is the description that we gave the gallery image. And again, we're going to exclude it from the display. And you'll see why in a minute. So we're telling views, go get this field, get the data, but don't display it until I tell you to. All right. The last field is the teaser, the node teaser. We didn't even add a node teaser. We really don't care about node teaser. But I created it as a field, and I put it at the bottom of the fields list. And then I checked this box called rewrite the output of this field. If I didn't do that, then on every page I would get a node teaser of our gallery image. And there really isn't one. But by rewriting the output of this field, not exclude from display, the other three were excluded from display, then when I rewrite the output of this field, in that little text box, that's where I can put HTML to tell it to display the other fields that I excluded. So I'm saying, views, you don't display that field. I'll display it. And oh, by the way, I'm displaying it in this node teaser, which I'm rewriting completely. I'm not doing any teaser. So I'm rewriting this completely. Now let's take a look at this rewrite box. How many of you are familiar with HTML? Most of us started out that way. And this is no different. 
The thing that you want to remember to do is put classes in. So here we have a big container div. This is, think of a box, and you're looking in it, and the bottom of that box is the main container div, and we're going to put our big image in it, our title image in it, we're going to put a shadow overlay box in it, we're going to put the body of our title image in that shadow box, and in the over lower left-hand corner, we're going to put uh, our, our, our three by three matrix of hover gallery uh, images. So we have a gallery container, that's the outside, and then inside that we're putting the header image, the shadow box, the title gallery image, and the body. And we're actually outputting that as this node teaser field. That's the trick. So we got a container to hold everything, a class for the gallery image, one for the overlay background, one for the title image, and lastly the body. Filters. In views, you don't want to display everything. And there's two common filters that you always use. One is that the content is published, because you don't want to publish uncontent, uh, you, know, you don't want to show unpublished content. And the other is that uh, you want to make sure that it's of a certain content type. Uh, in this case, we're creating a view to show gallery images, so we'll make sure that they're published and that they're of the content type header images. So that's just those two filters that we'll add to our view. On the basic settings for our block, we want to click Style Slideshow. Now you get this Style Slideshow because you downloaded the Views Slideshow module and installed it. Then you want to select the Options cogwheel next to it. This is a little bit different in Drupal 7, but it's just in a different section of the page. And here in this sli uh, Slideshow mode, you want to select Single Frame. Now if you don't see Single Frame, it's because this um, pop-up window here is actually a cutout of the modules page in Drupal 6, when you go to the modules page. And you see that uh, views slideshow single frame is checked. Uh, if you find that you don't have single frame option, it's because that is not checked in your module. So make sure you do that. Don't be confused when you see view slideshow thumbnail hover, because it kind of sounds like exactly what we're doing today, uh, but that's not the one we're using. It's actually more sophisticated. Okay, um, remember the White House website used 1234? Those were pagers. Um, so we want to make sure that we have a pager and we place it at the bottom. Excuse me. So select a pager, bottom, and pager type um, along that list. It's a drop down list. One of them is numbers. Uh, we're not going to use numbers, we're going to use thumbnails. And lastly, you want to select yes for activate the slideshow and pause on the page hover. What happens is you want that to say yes so that when you hover over your image, the image changes. If you don't, nothing's going to happen. It should be the default. And up here, this is the next page. There's a long list of settings for the slideshow, but these are the only ones that are affected us. Is there are different effects that you can select so that when you hover over a thumbnail image, something else happens. It could be a curtain effect. Uh, I'm using a fade effect. But I couldn't even list them all. There's, I think there's 25 or 30 of them, uh, different effects that can happen when you just use that module. Uh, here, also in the basic settings page, there's an items to display. I selected nine. I, I, I have a three by three matrix of hover images, so I don't need more than nine. I suspect that on the White House website, they use a module called Node Two, um, where they can create events create image galleries, and then they, they pick three or four and put them in a queue. And in views, one of the filters they says they would say is also is in the node queue. So it has to be published, it has to be a gallery, and it has to be in the node queue. And that way their people can just upload a bunch of images and somebody say, I like that one, that one, that one, and that one, and they just show up. I selected some boxes and hit manner. Here uh, I just uploaded nine images, and I only want to see nine, so I selected them. That could be. If you add 12 images, you're only going to see nine of them, and in a sort order that you have. Those are completely up to you to select, and I didn't go into that. But you could do sort options, you could do sort criteria, you could put other filters in. I would recommend you use Node Queue. 
as a, you know, some way, if you have more than nine images, to say, I want these nine. You could. You could do whatever you wanted. That's the great thing about Drupal. It would just be more clicks, you know, more selected options items. But use this as a starting point. Uh, got started a little late here, so I'm going to have to go a little faster so I don't mess up our picture taken in 25 minutes. All right, uh, down here, block settings. This is where you want to give it a name because if you go into, if you've been to Drupal and you see the block pages, you see a whole bunch of list of names. You want to give your blocks description, descriptive names so that when you go to the block page in Drupal, you see the name of the block that you're looking for. So in this case, you know, I call it header slideshow block. When I, so when I go to the views or when I go to the box page, I see that and I put it in a region. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm putting the views block that I created into the right region. And here's the blocks page. And all I did was select that my header slideshow block that we just created in views is going to be in the header region. Okay. This is what happens when you view the view we created. It doesn't look quite like we wanted. And that's because we still have some CSS that we need to do. We told it we want an image. We want a title image. We want our... Uh, our description and we wanted nine thumbnails and that's exactly what we got and the block is big enough to put all those in. What we want to do is make them fit for the size of our background image. So we use CSS and remember when we rewrote the output of the teaser node we put a container class. So you want to create a CSS file. All Drupal themes, most of them will let you create a local.css file, and then you modify the .info file to add it. And you want to add it underneath the other theme style sheets that are listed in the .info file. Because the one last overrides the ones before it. If you don't do that, like if you say, you know, I want the H2 tag to be red and 54 pixels, and you put that in your local CSS, but you load that first, then when the style that CSS file is installed, it's going to overwrite your settings. So you want to make sure that it's last. It's another gotcha. So the local CSS file right, and you can call it anything you want. You can call it my my custom .css. You know, you can call it any name. It's just a text file, and uh, that's where you put your CSS in it. You just want to make sure that you add it to your .info file so that it gets loaded every time somebody goes to your site. So don't forget to add it last, uh, otherwise it won't override anything. So let's go back. Remember we got gallery container as a class, it's a CSS stuff, and um, we have a shadow block and a gallery title image class, and of course our description class for our body. So the first thing we did was we just add the background image. CSS, the class was gallery container, and we want to do a position relative. This is so important in CSS that the main container, what's put in there, is given a position relative. Because everything else that we add, we're going to put position absolute. And we're going to tell it specifically where to go. And when you put one piece of content in CSS and you say that content is position relative, and it's in the larger container, and when we put other stuff in bibs inside that container, and we say position absolute, it can't go outside that box. So we have a background image that's 950 pixels wide, and we say position relative. Everything that we put inside that container from now on is going to fit in there, and we can use position absolute to put it exactly where we want. Does everybody understand that concept? That is the toughest CSS rule that you'll ever learn. You'll put stuff and you'll say position absolute, and it will go off the page. It'll disappear. You won't even know where it went. And it's because you didn't position relative something that it fits into. So you've got to do that first. So the next thing we're doing is position the gallery image, the main gallery image. We gave that a class called gallery header image. And all we do is position absolute. And we went at right 30 pixels and down 27 pixels. That right there is the corner of our gallery. Very so which one is the gallery header image? 
That's the main gallery image. I, you know, like, I'm sorry about that, that I probably could have used better words, but that's the main gallery image, and to the upper left there is the, the gallery title image. They're images. Okay. So let's position the title image. Oh, no, that wasn't the... This is, I guess we're doing the overlay next here. <laughs> this is just shadow-block. This was a class we gave it. We didn't put anything in that in the node teaser rewrite. We just said it's a class called shadow block. And I didn't memorize this stuff. <laughs> I looked it up on the internet and found out how to do a shadow, an opacity change from solid black to half black for Safari, uh, Chrome, Internet Explorer. If you just do opacity, various, uh, do a Google search for opacity, you'll find all of these listed. And basically, I have a text editor, and this is, uh, this is a preset capacity, control O, and I get all these from my CSS. And it works in all browsers, and I don't have to worry about it. All I change is the 0.5. <laughs> all right. And so position absolute again, and it's 40 pixels from the right and 310 pixels from the top, and it's just a light gray over oh, shadow. Uh, CSS3, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I use a W3. Um, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Who uses that? Gallery description, that was a class that we used. And that's the description of our big image that we uploaded. When we upload our image, we say, this is describe it. And again, position absolute. And I just, to the right 40 and down 295 pixels so that it fits in our gray block. And now we know how to position our title image. It's very simple. We gave it a class when we rewrote the, the node teaser. And then we use position absolute. And we say left 25 pixels and 15 pixels from the top. This is where it gets a little tough. How many of you are familiar with Firebug? Mozilla's Firebug plugin. For those of you who don't, you need to, how many use Mozilla, Firefox? All right. This plugin is available only for Firefox, and it's called Firebug, and it lets you look into the CSS, the JavaScript, the HTML of all these websites. Uh, this particular thing, the Views Slideshow module, makes all its thumbnails 75 by 75 pixels. It's, it's written in code. You can't change it by going to the views module and say, I want it to be, you know, 75 by 320, you know, <laughs> image. You have to do it in CSS. And the only way you can do that in CSS is to be able to find out what class the views module gave that thumbnail. And Firebug will let you see that. And there should be a session on Firebug. I think people should show that. But anyway, the class for the size of that is this big long thing. View slideshow, single frame page header, and slideshow block underscore one. And that slideshow block underscore one was added by views because that was the block we created, the slideshow block. And it was the first block that we created. This is a picture of Firebug running on Mozilla Firefox. And all you do is start it and then click on something on the web page and it shows you what's creating that. What's cool about it is that you can change the numbers in there. So you can, if you wanted to, you can go to height where it says 75 pixels and change that to 120 and the thumbnails will change while you watch them. It's the best thing to figure out how you want to do your CSS before you do it. Then you just copy and paste it into your local.css file and you know it works because you used Firebug to test it. So this is how I found the name of the class that's controlling the 75 by 75 pixel thumbnail size. So all I do is copy and paste that, put it in my CSS file, and change it. And I changed it to 70 by 115. I also added some margin so that they were separated and they filled up the 3 by 3 matrix area. And I used this outline. See that outline 3 pixel solid? You want to use outline for the most part when you're trying to highlight any kind of image. Because if you use borders, when you change the border, your, all your images are going to move around. Because these images fit in boxes, and the border size changes the size of the box. So if you keep changing the border, all your images are going to keep moving. 
but an outline doesn't change the actual size of the box. So you can add outlines without your pictures moving around. It's another gotcha. And look at the very bottom. Look at that long, incredibly long um, class name. And that's, that's the class for the active slider. Views, slideshow, knows where the mouse is. And I wanted the outline to change to three pixels white when my mouse was over it. So that's the class that I used. I used Firebug to find it and uh, gave it a white pixel. So little CSS, a little CSS trick with the views by excluding from the display, but then adding, uh, you know, let's say a sacrificial lamb field that you rewrite completely to display the other fields and give them class names. And then use CSS to target those class names and move the things around in the string. And so that's how we get back to this. So notice, if I do nothing, view slideshow after five seconds, I think it will, will just start a slideshow. Single frame slideshow, remember that selection option for single frame? I only have one frame showing. And it will automatically just change. Remember, I picked fade. So the pictures are just fading from one to the other. And when I hover over something different, it fades to the next picture. It adds the white background to the outside. It changes the title image to reflect that. And it works in every browser, Internet Explorer, Safari, Chrome, you know, IE6, IE8, IE9. It just, it just, it just works. And um, you could select in views, you could say, um, link this thumbnail to the target. So if somebody actually pressed enter here, you, you could send them to a lightbox module. I mean, you're familiar with lightbox module. The lightbox module, uh, when you're associated with images, if you click on it, it will pop up this overlay and show you the image. So you could say, link this thumbnail to a lightbox target, and when they click on it, it will pop up. There's so many things that you could do. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Yeah, because that's CSS, you can say I can, it's cursor colon, and you I think and you give it a name. So just go to a, a CSS website and and you know change it to something else, uh, or or leave it the standard square. I I chose to make a little hand. I actually did that. Yes, yes, ma'am. It, it would work as long as, in this case, we, we absolutely told it what pixels to use. An Android phone, there, there's a session tomorrow afternoon on responsive web design, which if anyone's interested in mobile applications, that's definitely one to go to. But in the, the purposes of this demonstration, this is fixed at 950 pixels. On an Android phone, this looks fine and works fine. On an iPhone, it might not work. On a rim, it won't work at all because I told it to be 960 pixels long and it only goes 480, you know what I mean? So it's not going to work. Um, but most Android phones, I can bring this up on mine to show it to you. It, it doesn't look any different. Any other questions? All right, perfect. We have 10 minutes to get our pictures taken. Um, if, you, if you want these slides, this is being recorded, but if you want the slides, you can go to uh, mydrupaljourney.com and uh, this evening when I get home, uh, I'll post an article with, with the, the slides here so you can follow this step by step if you want to. And my Drupal journey is one of those 0.05% places where I lament about the Omega theme, which is a responsive web design theme. Watch this. This is Omega. You get this for free by using the Omega theme. See how these things are all in line? They're also equal heights. Now watch when I scale this down. What was over there drops down automatically. I didn't have to do anything for that. So if this was an Android website, see all this that happens for free. Omega thing. Mobile first. You design for the mobile and then you let everything else happen automatically. All right. Thank you.